Welcome back to the Fantasy Takes TV podcast. Uh, round two is over. It's a big week uh, with the rest of the league on the bubble, and we've got to get through some of our pain spots in our team. And I know there's a few guys that are on the chopping block this week that we'll discuss, um, but we'll go through some news first. We'll go across all the lines. A few questions we've got here, specific targets, you know, guys that are underperforming. Uh, and then we'll finish off with, yeah, obviously some rookies that are, that are on the horizon. Ones We might have to make some tough calls on trading out as well. So we'll go through that. And then some captains at the end. But, boys, uh, round two, how'd you go, George? Mm, not good this week, you know. We did uh, 19.55. And uh, my entire midfield went, my midfield premiums, Let's not count wines. Went 120 plus. And my biggest issues are well, injuries in defense and a midfielder averaging 97 and a 200K player with a negative break even have absolute, like pretty much killed my team. So I don't know how this has happened, but here we are. But my trades this week were Fisher to uh, Billings, lost a nice 32 points, but did do Nick Martin to. So wrong. And it is kind of tough watching these big 600K mids uh, average 140 and not have them. So I'm glad to get one of them and did Captain Sarong. So he was good. And yeah, my MVP will go to Caleb Sarong because I captained him. So I was happy with that. And my fault is uh, Sam Berry. I can't really give it to anybody else. I... I bench him for Sanders last week. Sanders gets subbed. I bench Sanders this week. Barry gets subbed. So it's just 90 points into thin air. I just love this game. So, But I, I should have fielded Sanders this week. He was always going to bounce back. Um, and lots of stuff to fix up with Caulfield and, and Zach Reed and Hoare and Young in the back line. So that will be great. How did you go, Jackson? Oh, oh sorry, you... Required me for the podcast. I thought we were about to wrap up. Just keep going, George. We're almost done. Uh, how did I go? I went 24, uh, no, 20 44, which was all right. I think uh, Eno pe- pipped me by a few points, but it was actually, um, I-, I think it actually placed me on total points now ahead of both of you. So not too bad this week. Bit of a bounce back after, I think, finishing third out of us last week. Um, MVP of the week, or plus three, will have to go to Butters. I took the, well, I went for green for captain. But yeah, Butters 175, hard to go past that. And then uh, my fault of the week uh, it has to be Dacos. I was, um, actually, I-, I needed another plus three. But yeah, um, last week I was cheering, um, you know, a preseason picture standing up for me. And he absolutely put egg on my face uh, the next week. My other plus three, I wanted to shout out Yo, 110, my big boy coming through. Love that from Yo. Eno, how did you go? Top score of the week. Here, let's hear all about it. Oh, it's amazing at this time of year, mate. Top score of the week. Yeah. You, you, to be honest, you, I halved my rank, as I said last week. I think 70 odd K is the lowest I've been since I was, yeah, didn't know what the game was about. So halved that with a 2046. I mean, yeah, like. Early ranks that then mixed in with best 18, like from round two onwards, is like it's going to be just a shit show, really. Like, you're going to have to have a big plays that go nuclear because look, our bottom few in best 18, when the the terrible scores get cut off, it's just not going to make much of a difference. So, having Jackson this week, who's clearly my MVP, I mean, he's actually pretty highly owned, but he's MVP regardless. He went 178, so it can't not be him. You love your purple um, rock, Mane. Yeah, he's not Shrek, but he'll do, mate, in the same jersey. I just pretend he is, <laughs> um, which we'll get to later. Uh, the big fellas on the track, I saw. Um, and then the fault. You went? Did you? Did you say? Oh, you said Sam Barry. Look, Hayden Young, I guess. Um, yeah, he's probably everyone's fault this week on the on the top of mm-hmm. everyone's mind. So we'll talk about him in a bit. But yeah. Uh, look, it doesn't hurt that as much as it would if he was, yeah, like he's 40-something percent owned. A lot of people went for him to start the year. Um, but he's got to get that this week. So, yeah, into 30K or 30-something K. Um, and I really just care about my team and where it is in a, you know, position-wise. If I got all the rookies that you really want, um, not many underperforming premiums besides, you know, Young himself. And I guess Dacos, you could say, with one poor game. So, yeah, I think I'm in a good spot and it's just, about making the right trades now because last week uh, I th- already made a blow it up by boosting. I mean, I did Fisher to Barry, uh, 
Billings, like I think a lot of us did. Not everyone did, and holding Fisher actually did all right. I still don't think he's a keeper long term. And then I got uh, um, Sarong, like George, so that tick tick. Well, tick tick. Uh, Billings might be a pretty short term play. He, if he doesn't go well this week, he might be out again. But uh, the third one getting Riley Bonner, which I don't want to harp too much about. But um, yeah, that's just a terrible move. Some like shouldn't be making a move like that. I was like FOMOing out of not picking him round one because he was in my team for a lot of the last sort of two weeks. And and I went, oh, you know, after the turn, I'm like, he, he looked good. Obviously, Sinclair's back. It's just a bad trade-in. I mean, to be fair, he still could go well from here, but I just think mid-spot, you need to use that for something more um, productive. Uh, and now that he's scored a 49, just, yeah, I'll probably be getting him straight back out. Um, So, yeah, uh, kind of happy getting so wrong. He's the one that I wanted for a lot of preseason and sort of went away from once sort of, you know, Fife was back full time mid, uh, uh, Trek went down. Shouldn't have really been too concerned about that. He's absolutely dominating. So yeah, that's my week. We'll talk about some trades, I guess, later on what we're thinking, but we've got to talk through it all first. So, uh, George, you've written down some news here that we know as of Monday night. So we don't know if we're not fully across all the, all the injury stuff yet, but, um, what have you got? Uh, can you read it out for a sec? I've lost my Google Docs. <laughs> uh, I guess the first one's May. So a lot of us, did, we, did you start Hor as well, JD? I think we all did um, yep. with that late sort of news of him in the team. And it's backfired pretty quickly. I mean, we were confident with that team round one that he'd be in the, in the you know, Bowie role and, and should be pretty safe for job selection, uh, job security. But <laughs> I don't know what they did. They brought petty back in but kept brown in the team t-mac in the team and they just went really tall and he lost his spot and became the sub thing is with um melbourne is there's a couple of injuries now may broke his ribs a couple cracked vertebrae or something as well is that what yep. it was and yeah 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 it's one of those injuries where i mean to me he's got to be missing a couple of weeks minimum well, but saying potentially they're saying only maybe one. it's just one so I, yeah. look i don't really buy that why would he go out there with a couple of cracked ribs knowing that or the other team will know you'd put a knee into him and he'll be out again. So don't buy that he's back in a in one, like missing one and back. So we'll see. And I think Lever's okay. So he was the other one. Had a Good bit of knee nice. soreness and they just oh, – the game was done from the get-go and they just put him on ice. So he sounds like he's all right. So maybe Marty comes back in. Um, he's obviously got this poor score in his system. So um, – Maybe we get a couple of good on-field scores, but he's going to take a bit longer to make cash if he even uh, does make much. Uh, Fife, uh, JD, you're the one here with him. Um, it was always a concern yeah. for me that they do this. I think a lot of people were actually spruiking at preseason, like this around two to three where they have a shorter break because they play on Good Friday. I mean, look, it's always a guess, but it isn't at Fife, so it's not much of a guess. Bit of back tightness, and they said straight sub. Like, that's all JL needed to hear, and he... And he subbed him straight away. I mean, I wonder if they would have done that if they were still down in the game. It's an interesting no, one. I don't they, think so. they got back on top in that third and then they just took no risks with him. Yeah. So, yeah, I think he'll play this week. It's just whether that keeps happening going forward. You know, this you could have got a better score this week and really yeah. made some cash with him, but that's I the think, part that hurts. Yeah, the unfortunate part is just the better score part because what he's yeah. played seven quarters now and he's scored 25 basically 20, in each 80. of them. Yeah. Yeah. So he's averaging like 100 a game without the vest type thing. So it's a bit hard to get away from him. But they also have the harder part of their schedule now. So I don't think the scoring will be as good as what we've seen the first couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, Cadman, big score from him. We love that. As starters, got, we were really keen on him in preseason. Uh, just stupidly benched him. Did you field him, JD? I know George did. No, nah, he was the like only rookie I made a mistake with this week. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I benched him in favor of Sexton, so... We probably said it on the podcast before the season start, you know, obviously North round one, but West Coast round two, lot, you know, got to take the risk with him on. And just, I don't know why. I think because of Dempsey, again, he got 90 for me last week on my bench. I went, I'll chuck him on this time and, yeah, botch that one. But, no, nah, it's great because he's going to make a lot of money. Um, but he was, as the news is, he was a bit sore apparently. So he went 90 whilst playing a, with a bit of glute soreness. So, yeah, Kingsley's week with him. I've put that down. Um Basically said the buys come at a good time for him. Yeah. So I, it doesn't sound serious. He didn't, so he didn't look at to me, but serious at all. Um, he'll be fine. Yeah. He'll be good. Got to hold on to him. Yeah. 
Um, yep. Go for it. Uh, Caulfield did not last long, popped his shoulder in the marking contest. So that's looking like a. I don't know the injury timeline, but it's. Uh, it Bevo say gone. ages. He's got to go. I think Bevo so said it'll be a while until we see him again, something like that. Yeah. Cause it yep. would have been nice to see him get a bit of confidence, but that's it. Horn Francis still out with the hammy. Estimated three weeks. Paddy Dangerfield out for three, they're saying. Mm-hmm. Implications for Jai Clark and Tanner's got to come back in too. Liam Henry's done a hammy for six weeks and they also have Wood out. Um, I don't think they'll move Bonner up the ground. I mean, they could, but I don't know if they've got cover in in there, but that could be one to consider. Well, that yeah. Sean Maker had a really good first up BFL yeah. game. It's, one it's game. but defender though, right? Like, who do they have to play win? Well, that's Bonner. Like George was saying, maybe, but... I don't know. I'm just guessing. I assume Based on what? He's never played wing before, has he? That's he played wing at Port. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I think the, the whole point, I think the reason why he would have got came to the club would have been to play halfback. Although it was mm. a lifeline, but... We might get a kid. Who knows? Yeah, there may be someone. I don't know, but uh, that's that. A uh, yeah, big Shrek, Sean Darcy, was... I think he was doing just a bit of running today out on the track. He's hitting his top speeds. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> and uh, Jack McRae, 199 in the VFL, 46, 47 touches. Mm, Bevo didn't really guarantee he's going to come back in, but we'll see. Uh, it sounded, it sounded like around. he would be heavily considered this week. It's just a bit hard after they had such a big wing on the weekend. And then just quickly, coming back to the Sean Darcy news, I know some people will be considering trading in Jackson this week after his two big scores and a low break even now. Um, if the injury report comes out uh, on Wednesday and it says Sean Darcy two weeks, are you trading Jackson in or are you just avoiding him if you don't own? No, oh, there's nothing we can do now. What am I trading in for a 120, 120, and then a 90 from there on out? I don't think that's worth it. It's probably not, but if he's back, I mean, they have West Coast at round six, so playing forward it's not that bad. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'd prioritize other things, I think. Yeah. Prioritize other things. Great starting pick. Bad, bad, bad miss. And the DPP front's looking pretty poor at the moment, but we know that Sanders is tracking for forward DPP. I think uh, Jaden Pabowski figured that one out. Hopefully I said his name right, but that's, I think he did say that in Discord. So thank you for that info. And I dare say he wouldn't be the worst. I mean, it's, we'll see what happens, but I think he can sit at F6, F5 for a long time. Yeah. Um, that's all the news that I can think of that's right now. That's all the news. Nothing else. We obviously, yeah, there'll be more in- injury news tomorrow, I think, tomorrow night, usually. So, um, all right, big topics. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Andy McGrath apparently spotted in a moon boot as uh, well. Yes. So he may not actually be injured. That could just be a management thing, but potentially good for Nick Martin, just given that he's been taking kick-ins. Yep. Yeah, Redmond's back, right? So could be just, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and Ridley might be back yeah. this week as well. Okay. Cool. All right, boys, we've got to do it. We've got to head the defender line. We start where we can have the most fun. But what a painful line this year. Crazy. I mean, George has got it the worst, I think, because he's started a less premium than me there. And then Gibb just screwed. Oh, you didn't go Gibbs, so at least you didn't cop that as well. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to cut Gibkiss or Caulfield, and Gibkiss had money on his head, so I cut Gibkiss. And, and then Caulfield goes. There's some people that have three. I know oh, Henry has, uh, you know, this guy, he has poor guy, has all three. Um, then you've got Nick Dacos and Young underperforming. So we're thinking Dacos, yeah. like, is this a trade with his break even? And then, Look, um, yeah, I, 10 other issues popped important up. Important conversation for me this week because I don't have that many issues and my potential boost is Dacos out of the side this week. So I'm interested in a little bit of discussion on that. But I, I think um, like a couple of things to talk about. If you have to trade a Caulfield or a Gibkiss or even a readout this week, like how many of them are you happy to hold on your side? Are you trying to get rid of all of them? I think is question one. Um, do you guys want to start there? Yeah, I think if I had just six playing, I'm fine with, right? So 
you know, you got Reed there. Oh, he's probably going to stay on my bench for a while. But if you had Caulfield as well and didn't really see a good option, like I think Pink's probably the only one. As long as you have six playing, I think for now it's fine. It might get Darcy round four because that is a full week. And if you cop another bit of a you know injury or something happens, um, then you could be scrambling because that's obviously your best 22 week. But considering then what, next three or four weeks are best 18, if if you've got better moves to make and other priorities, I wouldn't be switching a bench, a dead bench rookie like a Reed or Caulfield if they're not going to be fielded. So mm-hmm. that's probably where I sit and then just see if, I mean, I'm very hopeful Warner's back in a, you know, next week. Yep. And he's an option for us. Um, but yeah, if you, I think that's fine. So look, I'm fine. I've just got Reed, but if you've got Reed and Caulfield still or something and, as long as you got six playing this week, I think you're fine. And to be honest, it's probably not even that bad if you had 21 because what are they scoring anyway? Uh, as long as you're good everywhere else, I, I can get around just pushing that problem down the you know down the line to the next week yep. or the week after. What do you think, George? Um, you're the man with the. This the is yeah. Uh, this is a is a absolute mess. Um, so Dacos is an absolute hold for me. No choice. Uh, I can't justify getting rid of Dacos when I have two dead rooks plus whore plus young. It's just, it just doesn't make sense in my team. Uh, if you had a lux- the luxury of doing so and you could get him to a Luke Ryan, I uh, wouldn't be against that. Uh, Dacos will bounce back, but he will also have that buy that he shares with Heaney. So that you're probably going to cop it that round. Um, I wouldn't delay it. The reason why... Just, I'm just trying to think ahead. One, potential issues could pop up. And two, we're getting Sam Darcy. We could get Finn McRae, get more game time. We could get, I mean, Reef, you can probably miss, but Reef looked pretty good. It's got a 70 in his system or 70 or 80. Uh, he should, yeah, he'll be on the bubble next week. He's played one game. So, and there's another name that escapes me. Like Sean Manor has the dead scores in him. So there's a lot there that we could potentially want. Now, I can see myself passing on Reef. Uh, I can't see myself passing on Sam Darcy. So I've already booked a trade in next week. And then the week after, you, if you have Grundy, then I want him out. So my plan is to fix two of them this week and fix the other one next week. I think the sooner the better, but it's team dependent. Maybe you don't have – maybe you want power this week. Maybe you – yeah, so – I think ASAP would be my answer. Just think ahead of what you're going to do next week. With what I said, though, George, are you happy like having Reed and Cough sit on your bench? No, 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 no. That needs to be fixed. You did mention uh, Warner. He could be the answer or potentially get a Toby Pink in this week or even go late on Toby Pink or a, or a Tom Brown. Is it Tom Brown? Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. He's... Job security, but yeah, okay. So I think what, you're not over him then. As long as you got six, okay. pl- like are you foregoing something else by yeah. fixing so, it. Yeah. Dead <laughs> yeah. Well, I think how, how I'm get thinking it. about this at the moment is like I'm happy to hold Reed until a better rookie comes up. So that could be Warner. It could just be that we hold Reed for three to five weeks or whatever it is now until he's playing again, and hope that he can make some money. Real long, slow burn. Uh, but I would probably prefer to not have two donuts on my bench. So if you are in a team where that is the case at the moment or you've got all three at the moment, I'd be looking at how to do a bit of a mini restructure this week with your boosts before cash rises to um, fix up some of those players. And I think we'll go through some of those targets in a minute, but I don't really like any of the rookie options. I think the other one we haven't really talked about because we, I think we all have them already is Marty Hoare. Uh, but mm. I feel like, I feel like if May was out like three weeks, you'd probably be okay bringing him in. Given they're stating just one at the moment, it feels much harder to bring him in with just a 12 um, in the system off his last game, even though he has the you know scoring to do 70s and 80s. So I feel like that's hard to justify the trade. So um, yeah, I'd be looking at uh, upgrading to like a Massimo or a Windy um, that we'll talk about shortly. And I'm sure we'll go through some of the other cheaper guys as well, like Nass, McGovern, Yo. Clark, I know a few people have been talking about these types as well. Yeah. Um, I think Young out is the number one priority if you don't want him anymore. You're going to drop, project to drop 40K. 
has anyone got a good reason to hang on to young i guess it's a good question because for me it is even though he's got the role which is great big tick and he's scoring could come good it looks like he's being affected by fife in there just not as clean as what we've seen in previous years either he's playing much more on the defensive side than what i thought he would uh or at least what we've seen from him and i just hard to believe that he's a keeper with some of the other options we've got down back like dacos ryan sheasel um Whitfield, Whitfield, Stewart, Sicily still potentially to bounce back. Uh, Sinclair, Nass. Like, I just don't see Young really threatening these top top guys at the moment. So I don't really have much of a reason to hang on to him. Yeah, I honestly think Jackson doesn't help either. It's probably not a, actually that big of a hot take. Like He takes a lot of the Ball clearance work as well yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. just bypasses, bypasses Hayden. So I think both of those guys doesn't help because... Yeah, like he, he's not getting as many contests. Like it's two, it's two games, but like looking at last year, you know, his little run, he was getting a lot more contested. He's still tackling reasonably well, but there's just any of any outside ball he ends up getting, he's just butchering. That's really what's killing him. He just kicks are just being horrible. It and he's usually a pretty good watch. kick, so it is a hard watch. You're he's like, got the look, intensity of a corpse watching him play. Eleven and eight clangers is out of the box, but it's back to back weeks now, and he's break even 160 and. If you need cash elsewhere, uh, I, I I welcome it. Um, but as you said, yeah, it's 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 a decision. Do you go up to a Ryan, up to a Stewart if you don't have him, or do you just go down to a Nass, a Windy, all the way to Matt? Mo? That's the question. I guess it's all team dependent, but I guess we can talk about some of those um, now. So oh, look, Massimo, that should have been my trade in last week instead of Bonner. Very very silly. Uh, doing that instead i wanted to see another week of massimo but it should have been the same case for, for bono i mean realistically maybe should have just um held off completely um but he's got to be a lock to bring in right this week i mean negative 82 break even um saw another week of the role similar thing he's just always sort of like back a stop too, he's, like a he's around defense i mean hawk's a bit of a joke to watch what they did on the weekend but um we probably got saved I mean, by not having him in this yeah. week. I think he would have turned up again <laughs> if he didn't. I think at first quarter, he butchered his first couple of kicks and that probably killed him since the game was over by then. Um, and he was playing a bit of catch up with his super coach score for the rest of the day. So, yeah, I mean, he's coming in. I guess that's the case for everyone. Anyone, anyone got anything more to say on old mass? No, I think he's probably the number one priority this week, just in terms of cash gen potential on him, plus the job security, plus he's fit and healthy, which is a rare commodity in our defense uh, <laughs> at the moment. The matchups look all right as well, with the Cats being a pretty poor midfield to start the year and then decimated by injury with Dangerfield, Bruin, and Guthrie out. Like, is Jack Clark the number one mid this week? But the Hawks should be able to transition from in uh, outside. Uh, sorry, inside to outside pretty quickly, which you'd think would benefit um, Massimo. And they probably should be competitive in this game, just given the injuries as well. Um, so, yeah, I think he's a reasonable option. Then Collingwood the week after, obviously, aren't in great form. So next couple of games, good. He should get over 300K, I think, pretty quickly over the next couple of weeks. And then uh, quite a nice stepping stone to um, one of the other premium defenders. It could be uh, Dacos for the non-owners, once he's come down a little bit, it could be Whitfield post his buy. There's a couple of decent options there. Yep. So we think everyone should be bringing him in. A few will probably already own. I think he's one of the highest trading players last week. All right. Now more of the speculative ones. George, I'll go to you first uh, with one you've heavily been looking into, I believe, um, since last Thursday, and that's Marcus Windhager. Now, he's in our team's end of last year, wasn't he, for Bit of a cheaper price, sort of a coverage player. Um, but full-time mid uh, on Thursday night, you know, Crouch is out. Played, I think, a half in the VFL. Had about 14 touches or something Heard like that. Hurt his knee. Hurt his knee. So, Jones is back. He was sub and had to come on pretty early. Played a bit of mid-time. So, what's your read uh, on Marcus Windhager? Not a necessary risk. However, I believe my defense is in such a bad state. It's going to take two weeks to fix, and he's in my trade plans at the moment. So young to windy and then a rookie, dead rookie up to mess is what I'm doing at the moment. 
Okay, so look at past data. He had one game with 80% CBAs last year. I think he scored 80-something. And then he had another game with 40% CBAs and he scored a 90, but 100 DT in that game. So his very small sample size, did 116 in the VFL uh, in four games, which is pretty good. Uh, probably the main one is David King liked him a lot in the preseason. Him and Owens were his two that he really liked when he was doing his um, doing the rounds. Bowie He's... Boys. Say that again. The Bo- they're Bowie boys. Sorry. But I okay. They both played for Bowie. Yeah, fair. They played juniors together. Yeah, nice. Um, no, I, I like it. I thought he played well. Now, is this a necessary risk? Uh, no. But uh, my plan was always Hayden Young, D7, M9. I've, I've always been planning for 23rd all season. Young is just not worth the money at the moment. So um, you can't take Windy out the midfield. There's no way. Now, I could be wrong, but I can't see it. And I've been saying like Jack Steele is has a midfield to himself or now he has a, a partner now so for me windy's in now disposal isn't great what am i expecting from him i'm hoping for 85 90 is that worth the price uh probably not but in my scenario i need to fix this defense i, and... I think yeah, 90 average is pretty good it would be most years for his price but the problem with Windy is like I feel like he can be a bit boom or bust and is probably susceptible to a 60 or two in there, which could halt his cash gen at some point. The positive thing is Essen and Richmond, the next two. Essen and just gave up big scores and multiple goals to all the Sydney mids. And uh, I think Richmond did uh, the what, same. They, they folded <laughs> to Butters and Drew and Rosie as well. And Wines even had a big score. So uh, yeah, there's I think a lot of points to score on those midfields over the next couple of weeks. For Windy, and yeah, I, I second your opinion there, George. I think he'll be second in their midfield rotations over those two weeks at least. So uh, I, I can't see him being a disastrous option, really. The the problem that we have, and I think the big theme for this year so far, especially with best eighteen, is that the premiums people have picked have just gone bananas so far. Like you could have a legitimately have a team of um, defenders, mids, rucks, and forwards, or maybe not rucks, but defenders, mids and forwards, where you just pick out the premiums that are averaging 130 plus, you know, like Heaney and Jackson and even what Flanders in the forward line. In the mids, you've yeah. got Bont, Green, Sarong, Butters, like even Steele's going 120 is a cheap option. And Crouch. defense, you've got uh, like Luke Ryan, Sheasel both going 120 plus. I'm sure there's another one that I can't think of at the moment. So um, if you went guns and rookies and nailed some of these guns, you're looking pretty far ahead, especially in best 18 when your rookie scores getting chopped off. And this is the, the, I think the hard part this year is some of the mid prices we've picked have been quite good, quite successful based on other years. But just given the quality of the guns and the rooks this year, it felt a little bit worse. So I think we'll come back once we get out of best 18. But it's, I think, what feels bad with picking up someone like Windhager this week. In in best 18 rounds, it probably doesn't look that good because it's on field over maybe a rookie score. And that rookie score might have been getting dropped off to someone else anyway. But he'll end up being a good pick over the course of the season, most likely. Especially if yeah. he fixes your structure. Yeah. Um, look, 80% CBA. 80, I think it was actually more than that. 80% TOG. Um, that 300k, I love Luke Ryan. I'd love to take get him, but that 300k is a lot. So I'm mm-hmm. hoping to reinvest that 300k. Can probably get an Uber or two over the next few weeks doing that because I've got Ollie Wines and money in the bank. So yeah, we'll see how we go. He's in my in my plans, but at the end of the day, a 320k non keeper, it's not. It's usually never worth it, especially in this type of year or specifically this type of year, but the role for him in my team is to be a D7M9. Do you really love Luke Ryan? Oh, he's hard to not own at the moment. <laughs> yeah, a different type of love. I know, but his scoring is ridiculous. Um, the other one you've got here is Blocky Bramble. People might be asking a bit about him, so we may uh, should talk a little bit about him, but... Uh, Probably don't want to spend too long on it. He's hey, look, he's had a couple of good scores uh, to start the year. Bit of a distributing role down back. I just don't think I'd entertain. Like he's getting, he got a few kick-ins round one. I'm not sure how he 
many he had this week. I think Dale might have had a few, but JJ's back there as well. I guess maybe a positive short term, and that's very short term, as Ed Richards will at least miss one week uh, with concussion. Mm. So but Bramble has really... one this week. Okay. One of seven. Okay. So, look, it's I mean, sometimes third it's situational. Third distributor is usually an 80-odd average. There's worse yeah. picks out there. Um, I mean, also I, I, significant soft tissue history. So, thought I'd Yeah, I, I just think the thing is, if we're rating these, it's mass one, windy two, bramble three, and you're probably not yeah. bringing in all three given some of the other priority potential bring-ins this week. Um, yeah. So, unlikely that people pick him up, but probably not a terrible option. Yeah, if you started him, well done. Would have been a random one, but um, I think, yeah, you bring in Mass, he's cheaper. He'll make more. Um, and the other two are just for someone maybe in George's position where they just need someone to play and sit on field. Um, so that yep. so they, yeah, have, have an option there. Now, rookies, anyone else, Joe, there before? Uh, I was just going to say, like, the 400K range guys. So, like, Yo, Clark, McGovern. Nass. Uh, I think there's one more. Yeah, Nass. Uh, like... Uh, firstly, would you bring in any of these guys if you're downgrading like a Young or a Dacos? And then secondly, like, can you rate them in which order you'd bring them in if you um, if you were looking at downgrading in one of those? So I would cross McGovern off straight away. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I would say so. He's turning 32 next month and had groin soreness in the preseason, hasn't played like over 10 games in about four years. So his ceiling is bananas and his break even's low, but yeah, not a season long. Pick. I mean, it's probably uh, Nas one. Yeah, Nas one. I think is pretty safe for me and then as it's well. Just, just Clark or Yo. Yeah. Pick your poison. It's yo, probably injury, yo, but fraud. I'm... Clark. Yeah. Is he a baller? Um, probably not. Yeah. Unproven. Oh, I like Clark. It's just the kick-ins aren't there. I don't know if you can. You can't sustain yeah. this. Yeah. No uh, that's what I'm worried about as well. He's he's Luke Ryan's taking eighty percent of the kick-ins. He's getting twenty percent, and he's only played on for half of those twenty percent. So. Yep. Hayden Young used to fight for him, mate. Jordan Clark is just getting shake of the head from Luke Ryan if he ever even tries to. So yeah, he has um, looked good so far. And once again, I think Freer's matchup gets a little bit harder in the next few games. So I'm probably not inclined to jump on as many Freo people uh, as others are. Yeah. All right, that's that's useful. And then sorry, I think one thing we haven't really touched on too much is if you're in a position to trade Dacos, like I think we're all agreed that Young out is priority one. But if you're in a position then to also trade Dacos out, would you be doing it this week? And how would you be doing it? If I had nothing else to do and I didn't have Luke Ryan, that's probably the only scenario I'd do that. Mm -hmm. And you'd go Ryan over like a Stewart or something like that? I mean, yeah, I would. Just uh, age I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, this is a very hard conversation. I'm trying to move through it quickly because I think I'm doing this trade and I think we're agreed Luke Ryan disrespect is on this podcast to have a very long track record of it. And unfortunately, he looks brilliant in a disgustingly good role this year. I think just have to jump on and bite the bullet. I think we underestimate that buy as well. Um, like this week, I have Tom Green and Flanders on the bench and some people are going to have none of them and have like a Butters and a Jackson. I'm going to get destroyed by those people this week. So there's also that too. And you'll get Dacost. He could be your first upgrade after the buy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I was heading that way early until Young put his hand up as being a trade out as well. So I was contemplating it. It's I was probably going to do Nick down to Mass and re-spend the money in midfield though. Mm -hmm. Depends how many defenders you have. If you only have three, then that's probably oh, not an option. You really want but, to jump on Sarong, don't you? Like, I mean, I've got him. It's just like if, oh, you were, it, if I was to do that. Then? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'm doing, right, that. I'm doing that anyway. Um, but that's probably what I would have done. I mean, I guess Ryan, if you're into him, but besides him, there's probably six midfielders I'd rather spend 600k on than than a defender right now. But I totally understand that it's just like you need players playing back there. So my strategy would have been yeah nick down to mass and then put that money and spend yep. a second trade and put it in the midfield or yeah somewhere else yeah yeah um, i mean i think the buy thing is actually more important now as well george where the rookies that we've got aren't going to be playing so like you know genuinely if you have someone on buy you could just have five on field that week and you know that i think it's pretty scary 
So, all right, so just to recap then, and then we'll move on from defenders. I think we've done a pretty good job covering it. In terms of like trade-in targets, it's mass one, windy two, and then like probably some type of tie between, I don't know, these bramble or like a pink or something like that if you really wanted to. Um, but trying to restructure so you've got just one of the dead rookies at most is probably makes sense. I wouldn't try and force all of them off. Then of the 400K guys, if you wanted to go there, Nass is really the only one that I think we'd entertain a trade into the team for, and that's for keeper upside. Uh, and then if you don't have Sheasel or Ryan, those are probably good options from Dacos or to upgrade to if you're getting rid of someone in the midfield, like a Wines or a Martin or something like that. And that's pretty much the crux of it. We haven't really talked about Zach Williams. Uh, if you didn't start Zach Williams, would he be a trade-in target as well? Probably yes, no. just given the state of... Oh, no. Okay, interesting. I would have still said yes, given the state of defense, but I'd rather have like Massimo or someone over him. Yeah, I think I just go Toby that. Pink or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Is, I think is, is he the only Williams. one? Because like, I, th I think we're still underrating Williams because he did have those two games where he scored well for three quarters and then faded in the fourth on each. And I think two full games and then bye will help. Yeah, I've got Trish Bice. Bice. I know. And I've, got North this, I've got North this week. It's um hard for me to say because watching at the game, I don't, you probably see less. Um, and I worry about that next week. That's right. I wasn't focusing on him anyway. He's got the skinhead. I saw him a couple good tackles and stuff. He goes hard, but um, not too sure. And he's 200k up. Yeah, I don't know. Our defense is injury ridden, but we should get a couple back next week. So I think we'll know more next week. With it should be young and uh, broad back. So we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll move on. But I guess pink just quickly. The rookie, if you're getting one in, would it be pink or would it still be Hall if you didn't have either? No, it can't go whore. Go yeah. pink. That's I think you probably just sit. have to go for job security at the moment, which is That's, pink. Yeah. Just hope that he gets there. Yeah. Like he's just your D7 or D8 if you still have Reed, depending. Yep. So cool. All right. Oh, the other uh, rookie, sorry, just on the watch list, I guess would be Yuland um, for after yeah. his buy as well. Yeah. 175 yeah. now, which is a bit annoying, but tough. he had a good yeah, score. Yeah, that's tough. He yep. had a good score uh, on the weekend. All right. Defenders, we've covered it. We'll obviously. Uh... Well, that's most people's big issue this week. So look, yeah, I feel like if you made it through that part of the podcast, you probably got what you needed. But uh, we still got to get to Powell. He's all the other way in the forward line. So cliffhanger, stay around, don't go anywhere. So much more to cover. Yeah, some there's some fun stuff to talk about on the horizon, like the midfield, which is going absolutely nuts at the minute. I guess yeah, if you've insane. got the right guys, but there is a lot of guys. So I'm sure everyone's at least got a couple of them uh, somewhere. Um, what did you want to talk about here, George? You've got Sarong versus Butters. Is this say if people had neither? Who would you be jumping on if you had money to spend? Say you weren't happy with a Nick Martin or Ollie Wines in the midfield, and you had money there. If you were picking between the two, would you pick Sarong or Butters, or would you go elsewhere? Butter me up, lock it in. Um, both <laughs> great options. Don't get me wrong. But uh, Butters has Melbourne, Essendon, Port. Uh, sorry, Mes Essendon, Melbourne. Sorry, Melbourne, Essendon, Frio in the next three, and then Collingwood Saints. Like these are five pretty easy matchups for Butters. Sarong, on the other oh hand, has God. three tough matchups with, uh, <laughs> like, George realizing he's <laughs> yeah, at, where where yeah, Sarong has like Adelaide, Carlton, Port in the next three, which are three of the tougher midfield matchups. So I'd rather go Butters. Avoid Sarong and Sarong may get attention from Hewitt in that Carlton matchup, like low chance, but just a flag. Uh, and then after those three games, it then opens up with West Coast, uh, Bulldogs, Richmond. So Sarong, I feel like, is someone it's better as an upgrade target in round six rather than jumping on now. You've already missed the two big scores. Um, I think you got to kind of hope that the next few weeks brings those owners back to the pack. And I'd be jumping on Butters personally. Yeah, I, I mean, he looks good next week. No problem. I can't sit uh, through that. Just don't he watch looks ridiculous. games. Yeah, he's he cracking ridiculous. at the moment. Um, oh, you get to watch him bet your team this week. You actually can't turn off the game, can you? Lovely. George has got Sarong. He's talking about Butters. He's the one he does. Oh, have. yeah. Yeah, that is actually a shame. Sorry. Sarong had two goals touched on the goal. Uh, I know, George. Oh, no. That's all right. I'm not, not complaining with a 141. It must kill yourself watching Butters run around where you see like wines like plodding 
regular. Well, because there's no repeat stoppages. It's like yeah, Butters yeah. waltzes out and it's already inside 50 and Wines is like, well, i got nothing to do, bro. Like, these guys are just... <laughs> yeah. You're going to put... winning the ball. Them? Like, what the fuck? He's an inside so mid-contested animal that gets fed on the outside. I can't believe I don't know. I'm looking... Player. I sit down next to my mate, like, on the wing and I look in the first centre bounce, ball's about to go up and it's Thompson, Dow, Baker and Torino and I'm like... We're running like the midget show out there. Like, and I know Zach Butters isn't the biggest guy, but far out. Do you know what is insane, right? Like, this is all last year's against all last year's breakouts in the midfield are just breaking out a second time, which is like so insane. Like, Goulden, another level, Butters, another level, Green, Green another level, Sarong, another level. These are all last year's breakouts are just broken out again, which is kind of crazy to think about. Even Um, Merritt and Petrarca. Uh, averaging more than the average it's like yeah. no one's coming down oh and Raul Raul who took a big step last year's taken another big step again this year um yeah it's pretty nuts Chad it, Warner like, to a lesser degree yeah this is the thing you can have um premiums in your side averaging 115 at the moment and and feel disappointed because uh these other guys have put like 50 60 points on them over the first couple of weeks so Look, you just got to hope that I think that um, they revert to the mean a little bit because Butters isn't going to average 146 for the year. So Rong's not averaging, I don't know, whatever no. it is, 155 for the year. They'll, they will come back. There will be down games. You just hope that they're sooner rather than later. Otherwise, it's probably season over. Yep. Um, quick fun stat. Uh, I'd go Butters because he bounces the ball. Did you see this thing on Twitter? I posted before. <laughs> yeah. Wrong. Yeah. Strong hasn't bounced the ball since his eighth game in the AFL until on the weekend. Like just running bounce, it took him seventy something games to take his like in between running bounces, which I found hilarious. But he doesn't really get on the hop, does he? He does all his work inside, and um, it's a bit outside too. He, he does, but it's chip mark, eh? Where he's not, he's not sprinting um, down the field. So anyway, I thought that was funny. But yeah, I think for maybe Butters, if you did know, as Jody yeah, went through so a bit of the future, and he's just he's fit now. He doesn't look like there's any concern with his ankle. Uh, yeah, he's going to cook. 14 or 15 effective kicks on the weekend, which is ridiculous. Um, Dawson. I'm trying to I'll quickly see how many teams he might Painful. be in. I want to say it's like 15% or something. Yeah, I think so. He had a poor preseason game, I want to say, and a lot of people jumped off him after that. Does that ring a bell? Uh, so, he so. He just... Oh, they put him on ice. In yeah, they sort of just... Off. Three quarters or something, yeah. One eighty nine break three. even. What do you do, George? I think you catch well, him. He, he did go one seventy three on Freo last year, so if he gets that, he, it's not far off the break even. True, very true. That was one of his good games. But what do you see? I mean, George midfield has got a lot of uh, chat this week, actually. So, yes. What do you, what do you reckon? Um. I don't know. He's just he's something's happened to his kicking. He can't find targets inside fifty. Like when he used to get the ball, it was like, okay, this is going to hit a target now. Now it's like I don't know. It's not sure turnover <laughs> or ineffective. Yeah, I don't know. Crows are under the pump at the <laughs> moment too, and I suspect they're going to lose a lot of games. So, or coming up, I would cash him in due to his break even. And I don't know if he's top eight or not. If I had to do a top eight right now, I know there's six players that I have clear top eight. Mm-hmm. Um, Bon, Butters, Green, Sarong, Merritt, Petrarca. I can't see them not being top eight. And I think Dawson will be like top 12, maybe 15. I would rather own Matt Crouch, to be honest. <laughs> Just because of price. Yep. Yeah, there's a bit of that going on at the moment. I mean, like, yes, you'd rather own Steele and stuff as well. Uh, or it took me a last through three games. I Like, I think um, Dawson's in the same category as Dacos for me, which is like you pick these guys to be keepers. They're thereabouts. Um, at least Dawson doesn't have the buyer like Dacos does. If you don't have bigger problems, I think I'm fine moving them on just because of the price wings that are going to go against you, but you do lock in the loss of points that you've had over a sarong or something like that. So you just need to think about whether you want to do that or just hope, hope, hope's a bad word in fantasy, but um, look for things to kind of revert to where you would expect them to be um, over the course of the year. So I think that's one thing to think about. I don't think he's a must trade because 
the role is obviously still there. He actually led your meters gain. He had, I think, 770. Next best was Hinge on 500. So he was actually still getting a lot of distance on on the ball and it was kicking a lot more as well. But was, yeah, very heavy tackle numbers, uh, which didn't translate to good points. I think Crouch definitely affects him here. The only other thing I wanted to call it from a stat side is, I think it's obviously limited sample size, but through two games, um, Crows are leading ruck contests, which is a stat that they led last year as well, just barely over the dogs. Uh, for me, it correlates to good mid scoring. You're getting these repeat stoppages where you can get tackle numbers and all that type of stuff, which you're seeing with Dawson. Just hasn't really translated into big scores this week. But yeah, like a one a one thirty one DT in in most other games for Dawson is like a one seventy. So you I don't know. I can't DT this week. Top yeah, fantasy yeah. scorer. That is you'd. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nothing would piss um, me off more. I mean, he's getting tackle. He's getting points from his tackles and all that. That's fine. It's yeah, his kicks. Like, yeah, we saw on the weekend with Rosie and Butters. People like same dream team, and they're about eighty difference in super coach. Well, that's what can happen oh. when you get you kick it twenty times and maybe get points from five of them. What you don't get points from the other ten, and then you lose points on the other five. Like it's just death, right? Like it on in reverse every time you kick. Like on average, you're losing points from kicks, which is not good. All right. So if we say that Dawson's uh, situational trade based on like if you've got a luxury or not, does anyone else disagree with that? Or do you think he's a must trade? That's a good way to put it. Well, I want to ask you, is it Dacos or Dawson, right? Say yeah, someone's trading out. Heading. If they're trading yeah. out young already or something and he's one, he's gone and then they want to trade out another one, is it Dacos I, sorry, or is it Dawson? For me, I only own Dacos. I don't own, own Dawson, so I haven't ridden the pain of this, but I think I'd rather trade Dacos. And the reason why if Dawson's unique uh, and Dacos is highly owned, if you're behind the pack after these first couple of weeks, which you probably would be if you owned both, I think holding Dawson and getting rid of Dacos is your best way to catch up or overtake um, rather than the other way around. Plus with the buy situation, as George pointed out, um, yeah, I think I'd rather move on Dacos than Dawson. Interesting. I mean, you get the surety that Dacos is going to be a top-line defender and you don't mm-hmm. quite get that possibly with Dawson this year and that's the other consideration. And then oh, the I would be upset if Dawson ended up, mate, mate. Yeah, I think you've no, probably gone pretty no. well. Yeah. No. Uh, look, starting for 650K, you probably would be upset. But, um, like, if you start him for that price, you wouldn't want him looking at M8 but in the 500s all year. Oh, I don't know. I'd probably still trade Dawson, I think. Over Dacos. It would kill. 189 break even this week. Like another another 90. Oh, boy. Yep. Whereas you know Nick's just going to sit there all year in your defense unless he gets injured. The buy just makes it closer than it should be probably, and that's the question. Did you come up with an answer, George? For uh, probably get rid of Dacos. Okay, interesting. Let's know what you think. I mean, uh, it is a tough, it is a tough one. There be a few, probably every Dawson owner who's got that question right now. Um, next in the mids, the sort of cheaper guys. I think George owns both. I know JD owns at least. I've got steel. steel. Probably three. If you had, <laughs> yeah, God, he's like seventh mid right now. <laughs> In the league, um, who is sorry, set of mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. On the average, or he's something. done the exact same things he did last year as well. And no parish helps big time, but yeah, true, true. So, I guess if you own neither, and that's me in this instance, would you be looking at either? And if so, which one would be higher on priority? Um, George, as an owner of both, and probably watched both closely through two weeks, I'll go to you first. Yeah. If I was to jump on one. Uh, because say I wanted to get rid of wines or I wanted to get rid of Nick uh, Nick Martin, had a bit of money left over. Would you do steel or, or crouch? I think you back steel in given his tog is like 10% higher. Mm. Well, is it worth a boost? Put it that way. Say I'm doing like you know, young out, what someone else out, and is it worth a boost to say you had 50k sitting there and you wanted to get. Martin well, Steele, or do you sit Steel, on that? If I had to guess Steele's average for the year, I'd probably still say 110. And if I had to guess Crouch's average for the year, we did 108 in this system. 
I would guess probably 108, 110. I'll say they're both 110. I think Steel's going to go crouch. Up, but that doesn't make sense because I just said Steel, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Um, is it more concerned? Yeah, I think like Steel's role, is maybe. Higher. Steel yeah, ceiling so- is higher than crouch. So I'd probably I- play for stealing. I think you have to like ask yourself, what's the point of the pick? Like, what's it doing in your side? If you aren't picking them to be a keeper, is there any real point jumping on them? Um, I would say. So Crouch, I don't see being a keeper. I see being a very good pick that you hold until he's buy round, probably, and then flip him. But I'm always concerned as soon as like you know a side like um, Crom a zero and two. The whole reason why they moved him into that midfield last year is because they were struggling and they started playing around with things and brought him back. He obviously hasn't been, I don't think, the reason that they've struggled this year so far, but we're at the point where they probably start playing around with things and that could be detrimental to Crouch. I doubt it gets better than than what it is now. So I think that's what I worry about with Crouch, but obviously been a very good pick for starters. Steel, I get the feeling, is better than what we've seen in the last couple of years as long as he stays healthy. I don't get the impression that he's a 120 guy or 120 plus guy anymore, which makes it hard for me to believe with all these other good options that he's actually a keeper either. But I feel like of the two, he's more likely to threaten um, or you know potentially still have that upside. So if you were forcing me to, I think I'd get steel. But the reality is neither of them are going to make that much money. And I don't think either of them are going to be keepers. So I feel like this is a bit of a dead range to look at. I think I'd probably just be going up to the 600K guys you like or... You know, we haven't talked about Miller so far, but I think he's priced similarly. Oh, actually, he's gone up a bit and now, hasn't he? He's like 570. But he's he's probably the one that looks more like a keeper than either of them. Yeah, we'll probably talk about him next week, I guess, if, you know, off by upgrade targets, mm. all the Suns players and, um, and whatnot. So uh, a couple of Giants as well. Um, yeah, probably I'm spewing. I didn't start steal. Uh, steal. Um, I do like the early fixture, and obviously we said with Windy, like they've got Essendon and Tiggs coming up as well. Uh, they didn't play much of a midfield last week in the Pies uh, in round one. Um, it was Geelong, right? So, yeah, like I did like their opening fixture looking at it before the season, but I just, yeah, um, went a bit of a cheaper route. I, I think you're right. Probably wouldn't be trading into them. Um, Steel's the only, yeah, Steel's the one I would maybe think about if you really believed he has the possibility of getting back to some of his best, like maybe 115. He's probably not going to be 120 ever again, I wouldn't have thought. But if you thought 115 for what he is priced at right now, then it's still a good pick at his price. So it probably comes down to what you've seen so far from him and whether you're, you're really keen on him. Um, but, yeah, I think you summed it up well, JD. If you've got extra cash and you you know, you know, haven't got a Butters or a Sarong, I'd probably be going up a bit further. But it is I think they'll though. both both be in the top. 13, 14. Mm. Or oh, uh, Steel and Crouch, I'd be very surprised yep. if they're both in the top 20. I think if it gets, once it gets to no, 14 to 20, it's, 20. It's, it's point. It's what we're talking sometimes half a point, a point a game, you know what I mean? When you get down that low. Whoa. Wasn't yeah, there I like, mean, I feel like so I many, could there's so many guys doing like minutes. 112 to 114 last year. There was heaps like, all very similar. So, I don't know. There's more surety with Steel for me in role. Like, you know, the only thing with him is if he gets injured, whereas, you know, the, the Crows may do something at some point. And if that happens when you least expect it and you might have an injury that week, then it could it could kill you. So, um, good starting pick. He started like a house on fire. Hands are elite in there. Later, um, sharp before Crouch. I can guess the word, that. hey. Yeah, I guess we should have said that in the news section. There was some interview today. Um, They've been saying like, this in the preseason. I too. know, and it hasn't happened yet, so who knows? It did. The CBA has dropped 50% in week one. And they went back up this week because they kicked everyone else out, so I don't know. Um, don't know. Week to week, if they keep losing, who knows? There might be a, a change. Yep. All right, and then we'll talk about... Wines and Martin. So, yeah, two guys that we sort of settled on a sort of lot in our community. They're in all of our teams, right? Yeah, both of them. I trade out Martin. Uh, I, don't, I don't have. I don't have wines. But you didn't wines to Yo with about five minutes before the game. That's right. Turned out all right. About twenty points, I think, in the bank. Um, more importantly, extra midfield. More importantly, on field. yeah, correct. Which is way better yeah. for structure. Yeah, which I think is what George's issue is, right? Um, 
Yep. He had him at like M6. It's killed you back to back weeks. I mean, you didn't even have McCurtry either. So just that extra spot in there. So I think my opinion with Wines hasn't changed. I'm happy to hold him uh, if it suits your team and you're fielding those three good rookies on field uh, every week. Uh, but if he's pushing one to the bench, I'm fine with him being traded as well. Um, I, I will say I think these games coming up will suit him more. Uh, I said it last week with the West Coast game. I'll say it again with the Tigers game. Like They just were free-flowing at the midfield, end-to-end games, not my, not as many stoppages as other game you know i think both rounds yep. the west coast game yep. tigs game have been the lowest stoppage games so port has suit the him. lowest bruck contest in the league so far with just 74 over two games which is down on the average of something like 91 last year yep. so yeah pretty big decrease over the first two games and yeah spot on wines is someone that's going to do better with more stoppages there hasn't been that many stoppages in those games so there they could no. be upside with um you know, uh, if they've got, is it the D's this week? That D's a like- night game, Adelaide Oval, I think. It's probably D-Day um, for him, really, <laughs> if you're holding on for one more. D's, um, D's haven't exactly been the highest rock contest side either um, over the last year. So well, but we'll see, though. It feels like it will be a more midfield intensive game. Yep. Yep. So I think that's my, is anyone else's opinion different? Same with you, George. Hold if you want, but trade if you want also. Yep. Yep. On wines, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm totally fine yep. to trade if it unlocks things. Cool. Or if and it's then... sitting at like M6 like George and Correct. gets the yep. extra, yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, get Beautiful. rid of him, fix up your defense, put an extra mid rookie on, happy days. Put, put the cash elsewhere, yep. And then Nick Martin, um, me and George just punted him instantly. Uh, I think, again, he was another one happy to hold and see another week uh, if you wanted to. But again, for me, he was taking just up a mid spot. Um, Got him up to a, a, a premium, you, you know, happy with happy with that result. But I just, yeah, wanted to see him longer in the role and, and am spewing still. I didn't do that from the start because, I mean, look, he's getting a heap of the ball, JD. That's not the question. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's, love, he's loving taking on a lot of those, those tougher kicks. And when you turn them over or they get tipped by a player and go out of bounds, which just get, happens all the time, it, you just get no points for it. So, yeah, ball's not, a, not an issue. It's just some of the decisions he's making, ball use. Um, yeah. He's not an easy ground, which I was worried about too. So um, it's a yep. tough one now because what if McGrath's out? you got Saints at Marvel. Do you hold again? Yeah. So, I mean, I think Saints at Marvel, I feel like I have to hold just because this has historically been such a good matchup for defenders. I feel like you've got to give him one more chance. And I want to say he had a 120 or 130 on them in the preseason, something like that. Obviously, preseason, a lot less contested, all that type of stuff. But I feel like if I've held Martin to now, I should give him one more week just to see this match up. Uh, and I guess also we saw a pretty big improvement in terms of he, how he played from week one to week two. Probably some coaching gone into what decisions you should and shouldn't be making. I actually do wonder if something like a Ridley or a Redmond coming back uh, helps him. So at times in the game on the weekend, for example, if Heaney would push forward, sometimes Martin would be left manning up on Heaney. Probably not the matchup you want for him. That's probably more a Redman um, that, or, or a Ridley that should be taking out. So I do wonder if that helps. The other thing I've been thinking about as well is I obviously don't mind Ridley getting it in his hands. He likes taking the shorter chip kicks as well, and I feel like he'd pair well with Nick Martin. Uh, so, yeah, I like. I mean, in fantasy formats, he's, a, I think, a very easy keep for me at the moment. Uh, we're desperate for good defenders, so counting down the rounds until he gets DPP in round six. But yeah, I think this week's make or break. If I don't see a good score and he goes back to being a bit of a clanger fest this week, then he'll be gone. And I'll just wear the loss on the chin. Um, you know, at that point, we'll have like Flanders and Whitfield and some of these others to get him up to anyway. So I don't think it'll be the worst time to up- offload a bit like Wines. But yeah, yeah, I'm I'm happy to hold. I'm happy for you to trade. But I think this is like the week where we know whether or not he's worth hanging on to. Yeah, similar category to Wines, really. Um, his tog was hilarious. He didn't come off the ground, did he? Till like until fourth, like ten one minutes bench or something thing. left in the fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching the game, endurance. I was like, "Has he been on the whole game?" <laughs> and like, he has. I actually don't know if it helped or hurt him, just because if you're trying to, you know, um, run off half, run and carry off half back, at some point you probably do need to break. Yeah. Otherwise, the efforts through the middle of the ground to find open space just aren't as good as what they could be. But yeah. I mean, anytime a player's got 100% tog, we've seen it with some of the intercept defenders like Sicily and Stewart and Ridley in the past as well, where they're going 100%. You just get 
bump in points because you're on, on the field more, more opportunity. Points per minute, baby, yeah. What about Peter Wright? He's obviously going to get weeks here, I think. Oh, you love Does a bit of MRO hurt? chat. You've always said no, that. No, I do not want you MRO love, chat. You love a bit I of MRO chat. I do not chat. want MRO chat. Does that hurt? Like, who's coming in? It might. It's probably a oh, it's probably thing, not maybe... Caddy. I think a lot of people are excited that maybe that means Caddy in. Uh, but we, we might have been playing too tall anyway with the dual ruck setup. So uh, just the I targets imagine... up the field, right? That's all. That's maybe. My oh, in terms of like... who who he can kick to. Oh, Martin. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought you were getting to like does Caddy? No, 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 no. Just like oh. Weird, probably not. Jones probably comes back. Everyone's favorite rookie from a few years ago. Mr. I know, Five. I know Theo is watching on cheering for his boy finally back in the side. Yeah, it's, it's probably a moot point. But anyway, it, it might it might not have an easy option, bailout option if he's not in. Um, yeah. Anyway, Wines and Martin, I think we have them in the same category. If you want to trade, fine. Put the money elsewhere. If you want to hold, also fine. And it's probably, yeah. Um, final week for them. I think their break evens are still. I mean, I know Ollie's is fine. Is Martin's a little bit higher probably because of that first yeah, week? Yeah, it is. It's like a one thirty or something like that. So if he only goes, a, yeah, if he goes 100, a hundred, you lose a cash this week. Uh, it probably no, is. I, I reckon the matchup's that, good. Though, the matchup is if, really if, so. If he yeah. scores like one twenty this week, you just keep holding. Then you him. keep holding him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doesn't that matter. My, that was my worry. Yeah. <laughs> Stuck with him for six rounds. My cry out helps. Okay, all right, really back. Yeah. Anyway, if, if he is out, we're not back. here. So that's yeah. just a wait and see on injury reports. Cool. All right. Spent enough time on those two. Uh, and then quickly some mid rookies. So we all have Carol. We started him, but I think people, there might Lucky. be a, a lot in this boat where they have neither him or, or Sharp. So that's probably a big question this week. You've got a little downgrade there or sideways from a dead rook. Um, option who would you go yep. in this instance so i just state the obvious if you didn't start one of roberts mccurcher or sanders for any reason you should have them in your side this week and even though roberts has already gone up a price rise i would still get him so have all those three um look it's potentially understandable that some people got ahead of themselves and didn't start one of them but just swallow the ego and get <laughs> no i'm not getting him <laughs> and then and then um what i'll, I'll <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to win Hank instead because my team's stuffed. <laughs> he plays like... at um, Norwood Oval and GMHBA. You're going to score uh, some. Oh, you're on this yeah, you're gonna trade business him. again. Uh, this is like. I'm so screwed. I've already conceded defeat. This. <laughs> this is like throwing gasoline onto I a can't put it my... out. I don't okay, know what anyway, you're doing. Do I'm not going to talk about my team anymore. But anyway, go on. What rookies it... do we want? Do we want Sharp but... or Carroll? McCurch is going to get DPP status at round six and then average more on the defense than when he does. <laughs> um, all right. So, so Carol or Sharp? No, I am, will be easy. I'm on team Carol. I think he earned his role in the midfield better than a wing role. And uh, Carlton have North this week. So, like that matchup, he's coming off a, I think, a bigger score of the two of them off round two. If we're looking just at cash gen here. So, uh, yeah, I'm all over. Jack Carroll, and then Sharp I still like as an option, don't get me wrong, but already spoken about um, for a slightly tougher fixture over the next three weeks. I think that will probably affect the wings a little bit as well if they're winning less ball out of the midfield. So uh, while I think Sharp is a good option, I'd have Carroll one over Sharp two. Yep, okay. The only reason why I'd consider Sharp over Carroll is I think Walsh and Elijah Holland's going to come back. Ooh. That would be well. I mean, Elijah Hollands won't take the midfield role, um, but Walsh, I guess, is the concern. I think I'm sharp yeah. if I had neither, and that probably sounds like stupid because I have Carol. But look, Carol might score really well this week. That's the thing, and it's like, how long is it going to last? I don't know. Walsh is really hard because hopefully we get an update tomorrow. Um, mm. But it's, I guess, it's one of those where they just. It's a day by day, uh, week by week. So I think, I mean, Sharp's probably locked into the team. Uh, I would say 100%, but he's he's done his uh, role well enough over the first two weeks. That's what they got him in there for. Um, so I think I'd go him. I think I'd go him. It will hurt probably watching Carroll go pretty decent this week against North, but I think in the long run, he might, he might make more and... They might not. You might not even end up on your field. Neither of these. I mean, a lot of us probably looping Carol this week. Maybe if you have Tom Green. Um, but if you don't, then yeah, he might not be on your field. So I think I'm sharp. 
It's close because I think in the short term, Carol might shoot up so much it won't matter. But yeah, hopefully Walsh update, uh, and then we can probably make a better call there. Okay. Um, Are you basing yeah. the Walsh back off the McGovern interview from earlier today, George? No, someone said in Discord that he's training for <laughs> something. <laughs> training for okay. watches. Yeah, I think I've, I heard something maybe gather around, but that's, yeah, again, we don't know. All right. It does seem weird to roll him up out against North um, rather than take a precautionary approach, but I guess North can win that, I got, reckon. Not even who they got in joke. Uh, they got Frio and gather around the week after. That's apparently when, so don't really know. For okay, sure. I mean, he still might stay in the team. It's just a mid-time. Yeah, like, but it's like just drop. the CBAs will go down. In which case, yeah. you'd rather have Sharp. Okay, so keep an eye on that. If, I mean, if Walsh is back, that changes everything. I was kind of assuming Walsh would still be out. If uh, if he's back, then I'd probably go Sharp mm-hmm. over Carroll. Yeah, he won't be back this week. I think that's for certain. It's yeah, whether it's next like next week or is it still a few weeks away? I'm not sure. Uh, and then we've got Jai Clark. So a lot of people will be yeah, as I said, at the top, looking looking for well, they're looking for someone to trade, George. If you don't have. Uh, no, nah, Carol, you don't have Dempsey, or you don't have. Um, no, it's not gonna have it. We're going to need a spot for Darcy next week. Yeah, um, maybe out next week. We'll see. So you're not doing him to Dempsey this week? No, not that you can. But if you had the chance, <laughs> no, 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 just <laughs> not worth. And trade from your team <laughs> perspective, Dempsey's much better, but it's not worth a trade. Okay, unless you have literally nothing to do. Sorry, I'm and still it, searching for Walsh news. For Walsh He's a news. seven news reported like three hours ago. He's a test for the Good Friday clash with North. Uh, what was the question? Sorry. Uh, sh- sh- Clark. Would you do so, Clark to Dempsey? Would you do Clark to Dempsey? Oh, yeah. This is a really tricky one uh, because Clark's really my under, only underperforming rookie at the moment. And I could get a Dempsey type in, uh, but then it means it probably locks me out of getting Darcy next week. And Darcy feels like he's going to be absolute uber must have. And uh, with no other CBA mids in Geelong's midfield, I think I'd, I'm i fine holding on to Clark Week, getting a price rise, and then going to Darcy rather than forcing Dempsey in this week. Yep. Cool. Uh, all right. That's anything else with the mids? Is there any really other sort of. Um... No, we can move there, on. George? No, we can move on. Yeah, okay, okay, speed it up, speed it up. The Rucks, all right. I want to speed it up, but now we've got to talk about uh, Brody Grundy. So, do you have a lovely one? I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, this well, is sorry, with Brody Grundy. Yeah, oh, it's my current thinking. So, he has got two easy matchups over the next two weeks in the Tigers and in West Coast. I'm going to hold him for both of those. He's going to make a little bit of coin, not much. And then I'm going to trade him to Marshall, uh, who's got a really nice run after that. So that is my current plan with Brody Grundy. Uh, I think if I didn't like Marshall as an option, I'd just go to Cherry this week or something. Like Grundy to Cherry is an option for me instead of Dacos to Ryan. But I think Dacos to Ryan probably works out better. I can still trade Grundy to Marshall in a couple of weeks. Now, it's a I think a challenge for those that started Marshall, which is the camp that you're in. Eno. Is that, did you start Marshall mm. as well, George? No. no. No, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm trading Marshall in two weeks. I'm in a different camp as well because I have Luke Paxson. So my thinking this week is Brody Jackson there. I mean, a few actually did that off the bat that did start. They might start in there. Don't um, hate it. Sort of Grundy Jackson type thing. But are you doing that this week before the. It's currently what I've got. So. Like with the young to mass move, with the whoever to pal, I think I've got it as um, uh, oh, Bonner. Yeah, that's an easy one. Um, cash left over, I can spend it on Ollie Wines. I can spend it on Grundy. So back and forth on who to do it to. And then it's do I go to English or do I go to like a mid, another midfield like a Butters. But I can do Grundy and still get Butters if that's who I really want. So it doesn't have to be Wines. I can put Jackson at R2. Bit of luxury there, and then either ride Jackson to he's going to make a lot of money and, and switch him if that's what needs to happen to an English or a Gorn or whatever. Um, or keep Jackson and then and then get a Ruckman in another way. Um, 
that's what I've currently got. So, I mean, with Grundy, look, I, he's just a hard watch for me. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's better, you know, like, and mine's is too, to be fair, at times. But obviously, there's maybe more reasons for that than than um, just his actual play. Uh, because Grundy, my God, yeah, it's it's a tough watch. The man loves just taking out of the ruck himself and throwing it on his knee straight into an opponent. <laughs> so, mate, just handball it to, like, the best young midfield in the league right now. Like, well, what, what are you doing? Um, Some plays you're just watching he, like get a touch. <laughs> Correct. And <laughs> if you play a game like us or a lot of us, yeah, if you just don't want to see someone's like name on your screen, like then do what needs to be done. So for me, he's probably gone in two weeks anyway. What if you sit this point, JD, where he like goes one thirty on Big J, uh, on Big uh, BJ Williams, and um, he's got like a really low break even. Do you hold him through the buy? That's what I. Um, no, nah, he's. That's what I'm won't... also scared of. <laughs> like he, he's breaking even won't be that low though, and not super low, but like. And then he's got like the buy anyway, and you like you're none still of us running out. cover. Yeah. yeah, so I still think he just goes anyway. And plus, Wits should be back, I think, uh, which is then he who and returns that's who he has to. After. And then he's yeah. got Reeves the week after that. So like two probably tougher yeah, matchups. Yeah. So yeah. I yeah, I think I'll punt him after the West Coast game. No he have to go no like two hundred on BJ. Yeah, or something to like be worth holding. Uh, yeah. And then yeah, Marshall's got I think it's Essendon this week. I want to say with the dual ruck setup, which can be somewhat restrictive. I don't think Marshall actually has the best history against us either. And that's partly because uh, once again, the two like low stoppage teams over the last couple of years, he, I know Marshall's a beast around the ground and he's gotten better, but if you've got two rucks covering him and you've got less stoppages, I think that can hurt. So yeah, uh, hopefully he drops a poor score this week. His score last week was a 106 or whatever. So another, like a sub ton and all of a sudden he drops 20, 30 K goes Close down to 600. Yeah. yeah. It's less than hundred yeah. k to upgrade Grundy to him in a couple of weeks, so I think that's that's my plan A at the moment. Yeah, that's a good one. What so, do you want to end up with, George? That's probably a good um, question. I think it's English and Gorn, but I figure I think Gorn. I'd be surprised if he got through the full season. To be honest, I feel like that'll end up being English. Sorry, Rowan. Probably. I mean, it's English, Rowan, Gorn. I mean, if you have Gorn, you obviously just ride him, right? You're not yeah, spending think... two trades in the rocks yeah. to, unless you absolutely have There's to. There's two so. ways to think about Rowan. One, he's not getting any hitouts, but he's still scoring tons. So what happens when he actually gets hitouts? Or is this just going to happen with the new rules throughout the entire year? So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Cameron's in pretty good form. They have a double ruck set up, Collingwood as well. So I'm not, I mean... He should have gone bigger last week. He played awful. Yeah. Um, you got Falcon yeah. and stuff like that. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't um, even close to that mark. So English um, had a 60-40 ruck split. Is that a reason why you'd rather marshal JD? Uh, like in terms of the next couple of weeks. like Yeah, and once you then jump on to Marshall, his run opens up a lot. So that that's why. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried. I think Darcy can take more bracking off English, and English has shown that he can play forward and back as well. So I think they do explore more Darcy time. I, the other thing as well, like as a little subplot, English is uncontracted, right, for next year, potentially <laughs> yeah, yeah. free agent. So it's an interesting time for the dogs because if he's asking for big money and they've got Darcy sitting there, actually looks like he can do everything English can do. Are they paying English big money or are they giving Darcy a proper apprenticeship this year and mm-hmm. saying like you're fine to walk English or like we'll try to get exactly what he's gone with. He's he, not a he, full-time rock though, is he? No. And it took English years to build it to that. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So I don't know. I just think that there's something potentially there where English does get less time and they explore more of what Darcy can do this year. So it's all, I did try all to see this out. And I think English would be good no matter like where no matter where he goes. Uh, but obviously he's best in the in the middle. Against West Coast, he'll do whatever he wants, mate. And yeah, he's yeah, in a one forty. Yeah. Um, I tried to figure this out with the Gold Coast game. I guess Mars Stadium doesn't help because it's you know one kick and it's in the forward fifty. It's like wind blowing a gale towards one end. And um, but but Darcy took every forward ruck contest. Oftentimes. <laughs> Like English was in the starting ruck, CBA, whatever, I would go inside 50. Darcy would take it. But in that same instance, English wouldn't be like sitting behind the play as like a, you know, kick away interceptor. He'd go to like full forward and then Sam Collins will be on him for the ruck, like the ruck ball up, uh, the, you know, forward 50 ball up. And I'm like, 
very strange. And I mean, there were so many like forward 50 ball ups and stuff that that might have inflated Darcy's numbers a bit. Like it wasn't a true like who's actually number one, you know, who's currently in the ruck at the moment. But it just seemed that every forward 50 stoppage Darcy took and English became like a forward or at sometimes even a rover. He was just like chilling around the stoppage. It was bizarre. Like go back and watch it and see if you can figure it out. But he's still pissed in a 140 anyway. So what does it really yeah. matter? I don't think so. <laughs> In the long run, um, well, if you, yeah, he's going to go massive on West Coast, and he's going to sit at seven hundred. I can't justify seven hundred for sixty forty split. But he's trading that go. in. Nah, I don't think he can. Anyway, it's an interesting I, one. The rocks. Anyway, that was great, so, boys. So, I'll probably just go to Marshall and copy JD now. Uh, <laughs> like one other thing to consider as well is so last year, the whole season, um, English had two games under sixty five right. Uh, sorry, two games under 70 ruck contests, I think it was, which was the very first game he had 62 and the very last game he had 64. Um, and that was it. I think the last game he split with Lob really heavily. Is that right? Like he yep. had his low CBA uh, game as well. Uh, and so on the weekend, he with Darcy on the side, he had 65 ruck contests. So I, I do think it points to if they're going to keep up that split, that there's less, you know, potentially less midtime for English, which will hurt his absolute top end, I believe. Yep. Maybe it's gets forward DPP. <laughs> I don't think it's quite enough. Uh, uh, who knows? Be... That would be that would be hilarious, though. Uh, oh, all right. and re- re- sorry, game one he had sixty uh, rack contests, which is actually the lowest, lower than he had in any game last year. Hmm. So He's... food for thought. Yeah. Yep. I just think it's a tough trade in. At this point of the year for 715k, it's yeah, oh, yeah, it's gonna suck watching it. He's gonna go 180, he's gonna get massive this week. Anyone that's got him this week, milk your captain or you came out of him. Interesting, though. I think last year, Bond went 160, he did 120 in the same correlating fixture. I mean, the other thing I will say is for those that don't like Marshall as an option or like don't want to get up to. English or need the money. I still really like Cherry as an option, just based on what we've seen in the first two weeks. Tunned up in both games. I think he's looked really good. Uh, and yeah, maybe last week wasn't so hard in terms of Jackson. Uh, and the first week was Briggs, which I guess isn't the hardest from tap work either. But I thought Cherry's looked good. So I mean, I still don't mind him as an option to actually make a bit of coin. Yeah, he's going to make coin. That That is for certain. Um it's just probably another one of those like you start uh, you start him or did or you don't get him in. I don't know. It's hard, it's harder to trade into. It. Yeah, I get that. Uh, cool. All right, we're going a lot of time here. Let's go to the forwards and then, and then we'll wrap it up. So Luke Jackson, I guess he fits in with the rucks as well. Um, quite a few people might have him in that line. Um, I think we said it off the top. You're not trading into him, are you? Or are you that? No, nah. uh, if they could have an option, come out <laughs> and say that in Shrek's trot back on the training field, he's re injured himself and he'll be out for the year. I will move heaven and earth to get Luke Jackson <laughs> this week. Um, but yeah, if the injury report comes out tomorrow, it's just still two weeks. I just have to hope that it, that's accurate. And him coming back means that Luke Jackson plays a lot of forward time and we kind of get back through that. But damage will be done by then anyway for holders or for starters, I should say. So well done, it's already been done. Yeah, damage has been done. Yeah, 19 break even. It's ridiculous. Yeah, crazy. Ooh. He's going to go over 600K by the time Shrek comes back. So just bonkers. Yep. Um, that was my bloody worry. That's why I caved into it because, uh, I don't know, He's he has that ability. I know it was such a cake run last year when he did it in. So it was kind of that like, uh, it was just easy money for him, but. I just went back and watched what he did in those games, and not but, many can do that, if any. No, no, no. We knew, we knew it was it was getting better, but yeah, spiking a one seventy eight is just painful if you're sitting on the sideline. And I just didn't buy this Freo nonsense. And in any way, it doesn't matter if Shrek comes back in the All right. five or so, something. It's success. But um, yeah, if you if you don't have Luke Jackson, probably not jumping on him now. So let's not. let's wrap. Let's get this going. I don't want to spend another half hour talking about these garbage mid prices. So come on, oh, okay. chop, chop. you can all you can all talk about your players going off. What about me? Uh, all right, let's talk about that five from JD. How, how do you like that one? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, as I said at the top, he's averaged basically twenty five a quarter for the quarters that he's played. I think despite being subbed, he's still averaging eighty six. 
Uh, I'm holding him for now. Yep. Say one more. Uh, Sexton, um, I turned this game off at half time, and apparently he played forward for the third quarter. Is yep. this a concern? Yes. George, what do you and think? And do you think it continues? I think fourth quarter he went back right again, so it was just some little... Yeah, uh, still got subbed on. Right, very, yeah. very late. He went back. Long so, was sub off. So back six and and forward, on. and they're already playing Lucocious in the back line. So, uh, look, I'm holding. Because a negative break, negative eight break even. So, I think it'll go. I don't think he will play forward much. I think he'll stay down back. Yep. I don't know, though. But he's got negative break even. Just wait and see. Yeah, if he goes forward again, great. Take the extra thirty k and run. The hard thing is, I guess next week we'll see the teams and make a decision because some people might need a spot for Darcy, right? Well, you will. Uh, if, yeah. Uh, and it's just, yeah, there's a lot of good rookies, right? And it's going to be hard to choose who to go. Uh, is Dempsey the best rookie available? Uh, yeah. The whole game right now this no. week. No, not all the time. Yeah. Don't count Massimo. Oh. Of ones that weren't popular starts, he probably is. Yeah, let's not count. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Ones that people don't have. I mean, I guess in the forward line, he is obviously. Um, yep. So, that's the thing. We sort of asked the question before with Clark. George says don't do Clark to Dempsey, but I would probably say do it. Um, I just think Dempsey's that good. That's. He's very good. Sort of why I started him. He gets Hawks this week on the G. It could be a bit of a. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised Match if you up. found a way to spike a 100 or something like that. And there's Sean Manor. I mean, first quarter, we were all going, holy shit, we're going to need to trade this week to get him in. <laughs> and then he Thankfully sort of faded out of that one. Yep. Um, he's got a sub score in him from the week before. I think, again, any other year, you're probably still looking his way, but it's a real murky situation at Geelong with a lot of their players that are coming back, but then there's another one going out in danger. He's still probably going to be on that real fringe. Like, he might get another full game this week uh, just because not everyone will be back. Um, and they might, I mean, they might like what he did, especially in that first half. But um, I just don't know. I think I'd prioritise Dempsey over him. Uh, I feel like as they get healthier, he's a every week sub candidate. So there's enough other good forward rookies. I just wouldn't touch him. Yeah. They just know what he can do if he does get a good game time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, of course, so, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I'll pass. It could be good, but we got like Dempsey and stuff. You just go instead or Sam Darcy next week should be better. Yep. Cool. Uh, and then, yeah, you said that. So we've got Darcy next week. Finn McRae, George. I mean, Pies fans have been begging for him to play a full game for a while. Is that coming, do you think? I guess we'll oh, you would another. think so. They. Uh, you know, when they're losing, they have to make changes and the midfields, like Tom Mitch was not looking too good. Great career, but might be coming to the end. Pen was a slow down. Scoring okay, but he's like, you can tell, I think he's almost lost a step. Crisp? So, Dude, what's he doing? Not much. He's just crisp, but with the rest of the team performing poorly, True. it doesn't look as good. He's kind of a cherry on top player. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. It's a good way of putting it. Steel as well. Yeah, look, we'll see. And then there's Reef as well. But again, Reef just, there's going to be no spot in our team for Reef. Uh, and he's not playing the greatest role in the world um, either. He played well last week. Don't get me wrong. Um, I, mean, I do think next week's going to be interesting just because there will be some of the mid prices that we've got that will have had a couple of price rises, like a Billings or a Jordan or something. And so some of these guys could come into play where you're just like, oh, say Billings drops a 50 next week, you probably just have to trade him because he's made the little money he's going to make and then, yeah, whatever. So you downgrade Billings to one of these guys and upgrade someone else. Like, I could see that happening. So I wouldn't rule them out as options that we look at next week. I'm That's holding Billings. That's very he true. In the Until he's fire. Five long. Until we get some decent forwards that I can field. I mean, I've got six. I've got no forward rookies this week. Like after trades this week, so I'm happy to move them on to get Flanders or something. True, that's also an option. I mean, yeah, with a sixty, his break even goes to fifty, which yep. is still holdable, of course. Um, Absolutely, still holdable. But he will have made an extra forty-five k. You know, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. No, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. 
But also, he scores a 90, full full steam oh, ahead. We're, we're holding. So I think, yeah. yeah. I think so a lot of these picks, I'm looking at these mid prices, you know, Fife's, Jordan's, Billings of the world, Martin. And I'm like, these are all one week, <laughs> one bad score away from just being traded next week. There's enough good yep. rookies, enough good primos. As soon as they've made their money, goodbye. Yep. Cool. All right. Let's wrap it up. A bit of captaincy talk. TP first. Oh, yeah, we oh. somehow skipped the probably the biggest he... trade in of the week other than mass. Oh, yeah, wow. from the bottom. Oh, George. One job, mate. How yeah. did he actually not? Oh, I should have picked up on that. Well, he is coming into my team. I mean, I don't know what everyone else is doing. I he's in my side as well. Mass, he's got to yeah. be what the second most um, sort of priority trade in. So, I mean, all three of us are bringing in Mass. All three of us are bringing in Tom Powell. So, look, there's a good chance one or both these will backfire. It's trading in mid prices coming off big scores. What could possibly go wrong? But Tom Powell has the second most rotation. CBAs in that midfield. Looks great. Uh, yeah, I think has good scoring history as well. There's no Phillips in the side to stuff him up. They're not playing their half forward this year. And the North midfield, I think, has looked functional with... Wardlaw, LDU, Powell are running through. Simpkin coming back in didn't affect him. He went into the half forward line. So I, I really like, I mean, sure, Powell could underperform, but I don't see what's what's actually going to stop him from being a good pick. Uh, and in a year where the forward line is scant, I like taking the risk on Tom Powell. Yeah, what's not to love? <laughs> Full time mid roll. I'll tell you what's not to love. I started Maybe Cherry 50 and Powell break even. in yeah. fantasy last year, and I would have won the freaking car if they were doing this stuff last year clarko you devil um why'd you play half forward for a full year i mean the cherry injury that's not on you but anyway i mean after that preseason game, i had one, tp you know? yeah oh, we all thought this guy's gonna be mid primo one day yeah and then guess what i did after he like dropped to 60 i traded him yeah. out and then he went on like four months of oh, four months four weeks of like 90s <laughs> i was kicking myself but i love watching him that year and then obviously yeah what groin issues george was it and Big footy don't lie. So two years ago, groin <laughs> issues. Last year, hip issues. Played That's what they're saying. Noble killed him that up that two years ago, right? Um, yeah, yeah, he's maybe. always been a mid. He's always been destined to be a mid. It's just they've tried other guys. And they drafted Will Phillips, what pick, whatever he was, three or four or whatever. I had to justify that by playing him there. You could um, see the difference straight away. Powell was just so composed oh. and made the right choices every time. He's, like His disposal efficiency is so high. Kick two goals. I don't think that like we said it's not sustainable, but goals. yeah, um, you can see how clean he is by hand. Like always, makes the right decision by hand. Um, and I thought that really his hands hard. were good. I didn't know yeah. his kicking has become that good. Well, I watched the highlights. So he was hitting darts inside fifty in that. You know, they were on top of the ground in the first half, but yeah, no, I just was surprised by his kicking. I think yeah, North have been waiting for that twenty twenty draft. Like they've. I read on Bigfoot like this is the biggest write-off ever, and then yesterday happened, or the the other day happened, and they're like, "There he is, he's Back arrived <laughs> finally." Always, always <laughs> believe, <laughs> always moment. believe, never <laughs> lost faith, never lost faith, not wavered for a second. I yeah. I think the other thing as well, just to point out, is that with Wardlaw and LDU beside him, there is injury risk in that midfield, and I think that would only probably benefit him uh, as well. So you know. Anyway, so yeah, we're all trading in Tom Powell. We like Tom Powell. Get on the Powell, yeah, we like Tom Powell. something. I, there should have been an alliteration for that. <laughs> we like TP. Ward, we like TP. Just last thing, Wardlaw's tog still in the 70, like still 70. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're still going to manage him. And that's why, yeah, Tommy's getting a lot of mid time uh, as well. Just out, can only help. I mean, Powell's um, help. like tog fluctuated. It was like either mid 70s or like low 80s last year i think he had 85 percent on the weekend but he had been 76 something percent the week before if he's yeah. up in the 80 percent um tog and they keep him at that it's really good signs that he's got a fair bit of scoring in him yeah 80 plus would be would be perfect so lazaro they shifted out and to be honest he played better game off half forward than he did the week before in the that midfield. was very uh, and then they subbed him i didn't get that and look, I was yeah. never a fan of his, but I thought that was probably his best half of footy. Oh, I think he's had thirty before, actually, against like Gold Coast in like round twenty three last year. So I guess I mean, you can say that's better. But impactful just, wise, he was impactful. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I think the other things is like Jordan, good start, been doing well, hold, and then Fisher to anyone that held him, bounce back ton this week. I think you just keep holding on now until the wheels fall off. Yep. Yep. 
Harley Reid, any concerns? I think a big game will come, especially once they stop managing his tog as heavily or they have a better match up West Coast. But they West Coast as a whole looks more competitive this year and him and Yo are working well together, I thought. Yep. I mean, well, yeah, someone has to go for Sam Darcy and we'll figure out. I, I don't really want to trade him, but someone <laughs> has to make way. Shoot <laughs> so yourself on the phone again, George. <laughs> It'll be Jai Clark when he goes 53, despite being the only midfield on the list that's healthy. Yeah. Jai Clark will underperform again against a poor midfield, and you'll just have to trade him. I don't think Reed gets to 350. Hmm. He will at some point. George? I just have, I worry it's after the buys, not before. Them. They have the Tigers in round five. He'll be yeah, pushing all a little. <laughs> Man, only yeah, takes okay. I think the two no, games no, is played. I don't want to trade him. No, I'm not interested in trading him. I, just just remember, they've played Port and, Port and GWS as well, who are two of the informed sides that are hard to score super coach points against. And he's done 78 and 63. I so, think the funny thing is, uh, both games, the first like five minutes, he scored 20, 30 points. <laughs> like he's yeah, it does fade just... off a bit, doesn't it? It doesn't. <laughs> it. But they've got the dogs this weekend, and like dogs can give up points. I don't know. It might be all right. It might be all right. Uh, all right, I know your C, everyone's C. So who's your VC is probably the bigger question. And look, you can VC Bond. Yes, you can. But you see, is Isaac Heaney or pretty much that it's it. So I'm assuming he's your C. So bigger yep. question is, is who is your VC? Um, Butters into Bond for me. Butters into Bond. Jordano. Hmm. I haven't really thought about it. It's probably gone into Bont. Yeah, I am scared about Gorney. I think he had a big score last year, didn't he, against Paul? I mean, it's Soldo this time, so not Different as now, easy. So I don't know. He, but... had a, he had a massive 74 against Port last year, so. Okay, I'm thinking of maybe when he was Solo last. Oh, that's last right. Score. They always get stuck into him. Um, maybe I'll do something else. Um, I don't know. Maybe Sarong ends up on. Anyway, yeah, I think I'm Sarong for now, but if I get Butters, I'd certainly think about him too. So, yeah. Yeah, it's 2022. JD had a 160 against Port. There you go. Um, and then did they get stuck into him in the game after? Or was that the game they got stuck into him? In? I thought it was... That's the game yeah. where they had no toll, so like missing key defenders and... Oh, okay. Yeah, you okay. just marked there the ball. Well. Just, every time the ball was in the air, it landed That's in Gorn's right. hands. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so Butters went 184 on the Ds last year. So mm. I think coming off 175 into a 184 last last go round, don't don't hate that. Yep, I think that's perfectly fine. All right, when is he going to get tagged, Butters? Yeah, uh, not sure, man. Don't put that out there into the universe, George. Why would you do that? I don't know. Uh, Saints round seven, George. Maybe your boy Windago might might go his way. I don't know. No, he Hawks. said in he said in an interview he didn't tag Dacos this week. He's just playing pure mid. Yeah, yeah. he didn't. He didn't. I like no, he didn't. the people I'm that were saying that. that that Windy tagged Dacos. I feel like they didn't watch the game. There's so many people that say this stuff, and I'm just like, were we watching the same thing? Just because you stand next to someone at a stoppage, not even at every stoppage, that's not a tag. That's not that's not tag. That's not where you crazy. need to tag Dacos anyway. You need to tag yeah, him around the crown where he's but the where he's dangerous. The, his Pies teammates tagged him around the ground. No one wanted to hand him the ball. Absolutely insanity. Beautiful. All right. Hopefully that gives you some idea on trades this week. Uh, any streams on board for this week, lads? Or oh, we'll try. Sure. That's Easter, though. It's a little bit it trickier with uh, family. Is Thursday your first game this week, right? Yeah. And I guess you yeah, don't should get teams till that second game will kick off at 4.20. Great. And then you don't know Easter Monday teams till what? Is that Saturday night? Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, normally better. <laughs> Friday 5 or something, I would be jumping on a little bit of a live stream. We'll be missing that. So You're doing a game. Um, yeah, tough. Oh, yeah. actually, I just realized there's one player that we didn't talk about, which I know I've been getting asked a little bit about. is like Jared Lyons, just because he plays that. There's yeah, game. Any, yeah. Any interest in Lyons? Again, probably, but not now with all these other... Like, I guess like if you're preferred... considering getting off Wines or Martin, I think that's the only path I could see going down to him. Or if you had, like, a Barrier or a Bonner, would you sideways? 
I am, but isn't Neil coming me? back? I don't know. I think I'll sit that out. I think he like yeah, was not in a position to take risk, got too many errors to fix up. So that's enough for me to say no. Yeah, I don't okay. think he's priority list this week. I mean, and... grand grand final uh, rematch, and they're both tied on points. Like, I have to rip it. I'm looking forward to that. Tied on zero. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Crazy. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, yeah, we answered some of your questions with trades and some players this week. Uh, as always, you'll find us more easily in the Discord um, for the rest of the week, and you know when, when teams drop and all that sort of stuff. So. Uh, be sure to join that. Uh, hit us up on Twitter if you got anything in the replies of one of George's tweets about Jack Steele at uh, half time before he jinx him again. Um, or one of JD's memes that he's been cooking up this year. Um, trying to yeah, jump on the, board you there. Had the but... big three. You yeah, had the big three. That was a classic. Like yeah, like it's that. all right. It's all right. Um, all right that, that was the, the tough one where if you were like, no, I'm not going to post it, I'd just steal that <laughs> without second guess. Mate, Drew, you are a meme lord. You got 100 likes. Let's do numbers. That's good. Oh, really? There you go. Yeah. There you go. We'll take it. Uh, But thanks for watching. Um, Good luck this week, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.